it's a while since I unboxed a new Dyson, so I thought it was time to try another one. This one is Dyson's most compact, lightweight, upright cleaner. It's called the Dyson Small Ball Multi Floor. Ultra lightweight with powerful Dyson suction. Okay, without any further ado, let's get this open and have a look. Dyson's first ultra compact upright was the DC24 and there have been several changes since that machine was introduced. This is the latest ultra compact vacuum from Dyson which has a direct drive brush bar and it's suitable for carpets and floors. I believe they've increased the length of the hose and the main sleeve. So although it's a compact lightweight cleaner it does have a further reach than previous models. Right, I glued this down very well. You obviously don't want me to take it out. There we go. Oh. They use a lot of glue at the Dyson factory in Malaysia to stick their boxes down. There we are. Eight. Let's see what's the best way of doing this. Right. We're presented with the the ball first. Now oh, that comes out a bit easier. I had a bit of trouble when I unboxed the DC40. And there's the cleaner head. And for some reason they've shoved the plug right at the bottom underneath the load of cardboard. Right, there we are. Check I've got everything, yep. Now, as I said, this is the multi-floor version. They do an animal version as well, which comes with, I believe, the Tangle Free Turbine brush. But if you don't have pets, you can go for this one, or you can always buy the Tangle Free Turbine as an optional extra later on. The only reason I got this particular variant was it was on um, offer. So at the time of making this, it cost me about £200, which is still a lot of money, but it isn't bad for a Dyson. And of course it has a five year pass and labour warranty. They've improved the wand over the previous version. They've gone back now to an aluminium wand. I think there were complaints of it being a little bit too pliable. So that's a lot more rigid, but it's still very light. So that's that. So that's the handle and the wand when you're using the hose. As you can see, there's some assembly to do, but there should, should be easy to assemble without any tools needed. I'll show you all the supplied tools. There's two onboard tools for this machine. So this narrow sort of stair and upholstery tool and also you've got the combined crevice tool with the dusting brush. This is one of the better sort of combined tools I've seen. A lot of vacuum cleaners have this type of tool but the Dyson one is one of the best because it's got a nice soft brush, the uh, actual bristles are splayed so they're ideal for doing your Venetian blinds and your lampshades, etc. But you can take that completely off if you want to, I think, you used to be able to. I'm not sure actually now. Mm, I know, I don't think you can. It's not coming off easily anyway, but when you don't need the brush, you just push the button and push it to the back. You probably can take it off, I'm not sure. I'll have to check the instructions. Inside this is the cleaner head, so it's quite narrow. So this is a direct drive, excuse the, the sunlight in the way. Now, so this is a direct drive, so the motor that drives this, so it's two motor, there's one motor that provides the suction and there's a separate motor that drives the brush. The actual motor for this is built inside here, which Dyson say in their, in their adverts allows for full width cleaning, but it doesn't 
Although this side it gets quite close to the edge, as you can see, there is still a large area here that's unclean, so it isn't full width cleaning. You've still got that, which stops it going up to the edge on that side, so you'll get edge cleaning on that side where it says multi-floor, but you're not going to get right to the edge on that side. This has got the max button that the DC40 MK2 has. So in max, that little squeegee comes out down at the front. When you put it onto a regular, you can see the squeegee goes down. Regular will be fine for normal carpet cleaning, I would have thought. And it looks like you can have access that opens up fully for cleaning. So you get hairs wrapped around it. And this has got two types of brush. It's got the carbon fiber, very soft black brushes which are ideal for cleaning hard floors and getting up fine dust from hard floors. And you've also got the stiffer nylon brushes, which are suitable for carpets. So that just folds down. And it's got, yes, it's got the active base plate. So that moves up and down. If you have any undulations in your floor, it should form a tight seal and uh, prevent any loss of suction. It's got these little velour strips all the way around here as well, but obviously in use they may wear down in time. So that's the cleaner head. This part is your little tool storage which clips somewhere, whoops, clips somewhere onto the machine. The DC40 is sort of the mid-sized Dyson upright. Of course it's a DC41 and of course there's the uh, Kinetic upright with no filters, the big ball, which is the largest. But this, this machine is intended for people with, with not much storage space, maybe only a small area to clean, or it could be for someone who just wants a smaller vacuum to keep upstairs. Just trying to get that off. That's, why is that not coming off? There's probably a reason. Anyway, before I assemble the Dyson, let's have a look at the EU energy label. So it gets a B rating for electricity use using on average 29 kilowatt hours per annum in electricity. It gets an A rating for dust emissions. So it means that everything that's sucked up should stay in the machine. The dust, ex the air expelled out of the machine should be free from dust. But of course you will be exposed to the dust when you empty it. So You'll still have to be careful if you've got allergies when you're emptying a bagless machine, any bagless machine. It gets a C rating for dust pickup from carpet. It gets an A rating for dust pickup from hard floors. It's 86 decibels, which is on the loud side. So there we go. Just trying to get this off. Just wondering why I can't, but anyway. It is very dinky. It's got, it seems to have good quality cable on it, quite a thick cable actually. There we go. Right, let's get the instructions out and assemble it. I think all basically I have to do is put the cleaner head on and of course the wand and attach this little tool holder. So to attach the cleaner head to the actual ball assembly and the rest of the cleaner, I've turned the machine over onto its front, so you've got the wheels showing here at the back, and then you've got this little red catch. Now that enables you to take the cleaner head off if you need to service it or replace it or remove a blockage. So all you do with the cleaner head brushes upwards, place it over this area here, push it, and it should click into place. There we go. So that's all you have to do, and of course if you want to take it apart, you just move that little lever up, and then it should just lift off. So that's easy enough. To attach the handle, you first need to insert it into the hose on the machine. Let's push it in, make sure it goes in straight, like that. And then you offer the handle up to this top part here and push down until it clicks. Very straightforward. So that basically is the machine assembled. Last thing we need to do 
is put the little tool holder at the base of the cleaner. The tool holder fits here just at the back of the machine. Make sure it's that way up and basically just pop it there just under the lower cord hook. You might have to jiggle about the cord hook, lift it out a bit. Uh, that's it. Push it until it clicks. There we go. That's the tool storage sorted and then you've got space to put your two small onboard tools just like that. This Dyson small ball vacuum cleaner comes with an impressive 9.67 meter cord which is nearly 10 meters which is very good for any vacuum cleaner let alone a compact machine. You have a total cleaning reach of 12.96 meters which includes the length of the hose. As you can see, I've wrapped the cable around the hooks. You've got a fixed hook here at the bottom and a top hook here which swivels. So when you want to start your cleaning, you just turn the hook down. You can release the entire cable and plug the machine in. Okay then, before I give the Dyson small ball an initial first test, we'll have a quick tour of the machine. I've shown you the cleaner head, so I don't uh, have to go into any more detail over that at the moment. This is the ball that houses the motor. In fact, it's not strictly a ball, as in the previous ball cleaners that Dyson first produced. The whole thing doesn't rotate. Instead, you've got two semicircular wheels either side, and this, of course, an articulated joint, so you'll be able to manoeuvre the machine around your home and in and out of furniture etc. There are two filters that need about a monthly clean. Now it says clean filters every month. It includes the exhaust filter according to the instruction book. It doesn't say any less. I don't think you need to clean the exhaust filter every month personally but uh, I can't see anything different in the instructions. It just says important to wash filters with cold water at least every month. The filters may require more frequent washing if vacuuming fine dust. So to access the exhaust filter, which is on this side of the ball, you just turn this purple screw all the way until you can take off the cover. There we go. And then this you turn. So that is your exhaust filter. So the air passes through the cyclones through another filter and then finally after it passes through the motor, this is the last filter before the air exits the machine and goes back into your room. So rinse that under cold running water. You can submerge it in cold water and give it a good agitation. Don't use detergent and then leave it somewhere to dry away from direct heat for about 24 hours. So that fits back over here. There is a little diagram actually on the side to show you which way it goes in. There's an arrow you need to line up and turn it and then obviously we need to put this half of the ball back. There we are, just line it up, turn it, you'll hear a ratchet noise I think if it's the same as the DC40, not sure. Yes, so when you hear that noise it means it's tight. Just double check it's okay, that's fine. The other washable filter is located in the middle of the two-tier radial cyclone system. So to get access to that and also to empty the machine, there's a little red button here at the top. So you just press that and that will release the container from the cleaner. Mine's a little bit stiff because it's brand new, but it is loosening up. So when you want to empty it, take this to your bin, preferably outside, especially if you've got allergies and then you just press the button, the same button you use to release the bin from the cleaner, you press that again and that should open the flap at the bottom. But because this is brand new, it's obviously not going to open all the way and when it's got dust in, it should open, but I've always found that when they're brand new, they're a little bit stiff, but that will loosen up in time. So the dust will empty out of the bottom, give it a shake and you can close. If you don't want to go anywhere near it, you can actually close it on the floor like that and then return it to the machine. Filter access is under here. And you can see it says filter. So you just open the top and then you've got this small washable filter again. Rinse under clear running water 
squeeze it out and leave it somewhere to dry for up to 24 hours. Make sure it is dry before putting it back in the machine. Now from time to time you might want to give the Cyclone and this mesh screen in particular a bit more of a clean, especially if you've got pets or long-haired people, threads and fibres and pet hair etc can occasionally wrap around the central screen. So to give that a more thorough clean you first need to em empty the machine if it's full but if it's not, you also need to press down on the button to open up the little flap. And when you press down on the button, you can see you've got access now to a silver button there. So you press that in and then you'll be able to remove the cyclone unit from the bin. You can give that a wipe out. You can rinse that, but again, make sure it is thoroughly dry before putting it in the machine. The best thing I found to clean the bins out is um, like a surface wipe or a wet wipe because they're not too too wet you can just wipe it out leave it for a few minutes and then it's dry you don't have to do that but if you like your machine to stay clean it's always useful and you can buy complete ones of these if it gets very cloudy after a while not that long actually these clear bins do tend to get a bit cloudy the replacements are quite cheap to buy on Dyson's website so now we've got complete access, you can use the brush attachment on your combination tool if you want to and just use that to brush any debris or if you've got another vacuum cleaner to hand you can use suction as well to clean that. Again you shouldn't really wet this cyclone unit. I have in the past with similar machines, I have actually rinsed because a lot of dust can get underneath this mesh screen and it is not really easy to get off it's not designed to be taken off easily that but you can actually put running water on the outside try not to get water on the inside of the cyclones if you do it's no tragedy but just make sure it is thoroughly thoroughly dry before using the machine again because any liquid that's left inside here can be sucked straight through into the motor and it won't do your motor any good but in most cases, a wipe with a damp cloth or a wet wipe around here should suffice. So once you've uh, cleaned it, there's a little, little oblong cut out there at the front. So that corresponds with, you can just see that little lip there, let's point to it. You see that little lip there, so you need to marry that up with the hole. like that and then you push it back there you go until it clicks into position so now it's closed that's all ready for use again then it can go back on the machine this red button is the on off switch for the Dyson DC small ball by default when you press that down it automatically turns on the brush roll providing the machine isn't in the upright position. If it's upright the brush roll won't rotate but as soon as you recline the machine to start cleaning the brush will start to rotate so that's default. If you want to turn the brush bar off for delicate floors or delicate rugs you can press this brush bar button and then you've got suction only but this is designed to clean hard floors as well as carpets with the brush roll rotating. For more compact storage you can leave the Dyson small ball in this position. When you want to use the machine for cleaning you simply pull up on the handle until it clicks into the open position. When you want to retract the handle again you press this little red button here and you can push the handle down. To use the cleaning tools you pull the handle up and then press on the red button again at the base of the handle and you can pull the handle off completely and then you can lift up the hose and at the end of the handle you've got this little cover so you open that and then clip the hose into the end. It's got a nice secure fitting. If you want to release it you press that red button. So now we can use the Dyson small ball for your stairs and your above floor cleaning. This can be adjusted. You can lower or extend so if you want to reach up high for the cobwebs you can have it in that position. We can use it in that lower position as well. So then you can put any of the tools directly onto the end here, like that, there just the push fit, or you can actually fit the tools directly onto the hose and they click in just like this 
That's ideal for more confined spaces. If you're cleaning the car, for example, it enables you to get into those nooks and crannies a bit easier. When you finish using the cleaning tools, you need to remove the hose from the wand by pressing the red button here, and then close the end cap. And then you need to put the wand inside the hose. Do it carefully, you don't want to get it caught. So push it carefully in, and then reposition the wand onto the machine until it clicks, and then you're ready to clean again. I will be doing a full review and demonstration on this Dyson small ball vacuum cleaner, but for an initial test, I've just put down some dirt on my carpet. There's some dust, fluff, pet hairs, bits of paper, and some rolled oats. We'll just see how effective this compact Dyson is. Okay, so to use the machine, just incline the handle backwards and the back wheels will retract. I'll switch it on. I've got it in regular mode. I've not switched it onto max. good although I did notice I'm not sure it picked up on camera but the exhaust vent from the side of the ball did seem to blow some of the larger debris to the side obviously it's a bit more muck than you'd expect to find uh, when you're cleaning your carpets regularly but you could feel for a small compact vacuum cleaner I could feel it was actually gripping the carpet I mean looking very very close there are some tiny tiny bits but on the whole, that's done a very good job. Right, I'll just pick up the rest of this. Well, that's about the end of my unboxing and initial demonstration of the Dyson Small Ball Vacuum Cleaner. So far, I'm pretty impressed with it. It seems a bit quieter than previous models, and it certainly packs a punch for such a small vacuum. I like the way that Dyson have extended the reach of this machine, despite it being compact and small. It does have a nice long cable. The hose isn't as long as it could be, but it is very light, so when you're cleaning stairs, you can actually carry the machine. Of course, I'll show you how far it reaches up the stairs when I do my full demo. If you have any questions about this Dyson, please ask in the comments section below. Please thumb up, please subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So, until the next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.